Hello everybody. Today we are continuing the class regarding Postal Volume 7 which is the volume that explains the rules and regulations relating to railway mail services. We have already seen 35 rules. Now we are going to see the next rules. Remember that we are uh, talking about the general rules pertaining to mail offices as well as sections. Rule number 36. What is rule number 36? It states that the window of the van needs to be closed whenever the section that is at a part of the train arrives at a platform. Why? We can understand that there is a there is a danger of the mail bags being uh, uh, being uh, uh, being robbed of doing when it is stationed in the platform. So it needs to be closed. The windows should be always closed, and the staff should not indulge themselves in unnecessary communication with others. As usual, because it is also understandable, they may reveal the daily route, how the mail bags are being transmitted. Like while talking, you may also reveal what it contains. There is the danger of that. So staff should not unnecessarily talk with the other travelers. <laughs> Rule number 37 states that there is a prohibition for cooking and usage of stove. Why? Because it will damage if there is an untoward incident, it will damage the mail bags that are being carried by the section. So who has to ensure this? Who has to ensure that uh, cooking and uh, stove usage is not done inside a section? Naturally, the supervisor of the section, who is mail guard or mail agent. Now suppose, rule number 36. Now suppose if uh, the official who is in the mail van in the section is down with a serious illness, then what, what, what needs to be done? The supervisor of the section, that is the mail agent or the mail guard, has to immediately report it to the superintendent of RMS. And he also has to report, uh, report it to the train guard. If it is in a mail office, if an official in a mail office has any serious illness, naturally the in charge of the mail office, who is HSA, has to report it to the superintendent. The, in this, the question will be asked, who will report regarding serious illness and to whom? It will always be thus in charge of the particular office. If it is section, it is mail agent or uh, mail office. Uh, always the serious illness needs to be reported to the superintendent. Whether, if it is, it, who should report it? It depends upon the place. If it is section, the supervisor of the section, mail guard or mail agent will report it. If it is in the mail office, the supervisor of mail office who is HSA will report. In section, you should also need to additionally inform to the train guard. Next is a very important role, mail abstract. Whether you are appearing for postman, IP or whatever exams it is, the form number of mail abstract, there is always a question that asks you to that ask you to choose the correct form number. If it is transit section, the mail abstract will bear the form number M42. For mail offices, it's M43. Now, this abstract is divided into two parts, which is mails and bags. What is the difference between mails and bags? Mails means it also contains, mails denotes those bags in which the articles and everything will be present. Bags means the physical bags, like the empty bag, it may be empty bags. Like one mail bag, if it is closed, it may contain a packet bag. What do you mean by packet bag? Many empty bags will be enclosed in it. In that case, in mail abstract, this packet bag will be entered as one bag. In bag abstract, it will not be entered as one bag. How many did you receive? If there are 25 empty bags enclosed in a packet bag, in the bag abstract, the number of bags received will be 26. In mail abstract, it will be one because it is one packet bag. So I'm giving an example why it needs to be divided into two parts, mails and bags. Whatever it is, the general rule, whenever, whether you are in accounts or in, even in our general post offices, whenever you are writing a daily account, receipts will always be present in the left hand side and dispatch will always be in the right hand side. When you talk about receipts, what will be the receipt of mails? There will be compulsory, that is, there will be mandatory mails, mail bags that the mail office needs to receive. Like if the mail office is mapped to like particular post office, and in that post office due mail list, it will be written that 
they have to close at least one register back to the mail office. And in the mail office, at due mail also, it will be written the same thing. So instead of receiving one due back, that is one mandatory back from the post office, if it receives three bags, four bags, so then the additional bags that is received by the mail office is called as unusual mails. So naturally, the mandatory mails and the additional mails together will be present in the receipt section. And the dispatch section, just like how there are, there are, there are mandatory mail bags that needs to be received by the mail office, there are mandatory bags that needs to be closed. So number of mandatory bags that is being closed along with that, number actually dispatched why what should will there be a difference with that then why are we showing it separately why can't we just show like if it is number of due mails is one and uh, unusual is three why can't we just write as four because we need to ensure that the number is never below one that is number is never below the mandatory number we have to show it separately that's why number of due mails will be written separately that will be written first and then the actual dispatch or number of unusual mails will always be returned. So this abstract, if when you do that, you will be able to know how many were received and how many were will be dispatched. Now, forward bags. They are talking about a concept called as forward bags. What do you mean by forward bags? Before going to uh, understand what is forward bag, we need to know what happens when a mail office receives a mail bag. Imagine a mail office is receiving a register back from the post office. What will they do? They will open it and whatever is inside the inside the mail bag, they're going to segregate. If there are 100 articles in it, 10 may be to another post office, 10 may be to another circle, 10 may be to another mail office. So based on that, the contents that is present in one mail bag, it will be distributed through, another, through several mail bags. The mail bag will be opened. But apart from this, that mail office will also be receiving mail bags that is not addressed to them. Like a post office is closing a bag to a mail office X, yes. but it, it doesn't it doesn't have the provision or that it, it can't close this, it can't send the bag directly to the mail office or it can't close the bag directly to the post office. Then what will it do? So it will close the bag with the tag addressed to the concerned post office or the mail bag. The bag will be, however, sent to the mail office through which it is mapped. So that concerned mail office, while receiving the mail bag, they will see that the bag is not addressed to them. So what will they do? They, call, they will not open and deal with the contents of the bag. They will simply forward the bag to the concerned post office or the mail office. So these bags are called as forward bags because their content are not being dealt by the mail office. Now, if you see, when I talked just a few minutes before, mail bags, the content of the mail bags will be dealt and it may be distributed through other several mail bags. So the number of mail bags received and dispatched will not be the same. It will, it will differ. But when it comes to forward bags, the number of forward bags that the mail office received needs to be dispatched compulsorily. Why? Because they are not supposed to deal with it. So they have to simply forward it. That is why they need to be shown separately. If the mail office received 10 forward bags, 10 forward bags must be dispatched. That is why total of forward bags on both sides should agree. Okay, what about bags? Bag abstract. Like the mail office may require more bags or it may not The mail office will not be receiving like uh, uh, will not be having more number of bags. In that case, they will receive uh, bags from their bag office, record office. Sometimes the number of bags will be excess, so they will send it to the record office. So number of bags, the physical bags that will be written. That, that also they have due bags. Okay, that due bags that needs to be received that will be in receipt. Dispatch of bags, you see it is being uh, it is being sectioned into four parts. First is how many bags are closing. That will be automatically number of bags will be used for that. Then how many are actually closed and dispatched. Then the unusual mails. 
and whatever is remaining, you are going to hand over it to the record office or sub record office. So total of number of bags and both sides should agree. Why? Why? Because you should not leave like if you have dealt with 70 bags on that day, then the 70 bags like if you are if you don't need 70 bags, like you only need like 50 bags to dispatch to other post offices and the other mail offices, the remaining 20 will you will have it as a balance. So what should you do for the remaining 20? You should send it to the record office stating that it is the balance on that day. So only after you send it to the record office, you will be able to tally both sides. So it is important to tally the bag abstract. And you have to also show, like if you get an unusual mail, you have to show from which office it is you received and why, the, why it has been received. Those reasons needs to be told in that. Okay, whatever, if suppose, if they are supposed to close in this manner only a particular bag, but it is not being received in that particular manner, then you have to, every type that is unusual needs to be recorded in the mail bags. Whatever it is, detailed of each and every particular will be written in the reverse of the abstract. Next one, what they are telling is, The record office will actually tell them how will they know how many due bags they need to receive and how many they have to display. And then the, those how many due bags they have to receive that will be given by the record office. When will they give it? Even before they start receiving the bags, which means even before they start entering into the mail abstract. Before that, the record office will say, see, today you will be receiving these many due bags. So based on that, they will be proceeding with them in the abstract. Suppose if there are unusual bags included, then they have to mention that in the foot of the form. Like you have to say like packet bag is usually an unusual bag. You have to say that it is extra. These bags are unusual. Why are we using extra? This extra is nothing but another word for unusual. What about section? In case of mail office, it is going to be stationary. Number of receipts and dispatch is not going to differ there. It will be differing only based on the timing. Like morning, they will be the, when the set starts, the number based on the, uh, the train that arrives or based on the receipt from the post offices, based on that only the mail abstract is going to be made. But when it comes to section, which is a moving path, like out trip, when it leaves the mail office for its trip, at that time, it will be both sending out the bags to the particular stations and it will also be receiving the bags. So there one abstract will be for out trip and another abstract will be for in trip. In trip means towards the mail office. When the section returns to the mail office, then it is in trip. This is the about mail abstract. Form number 42 and 43 divided into two parts, mails and bags. Always due bags should be is compulsory in both in receipt and mail dispatch. Write the particulars of unusual mails separate together with the new mails. Forward back should always tally. And when it comes to bag abstract, both the receipt and uh, receipt and dispatch needs to tally. Whatever excess, they need to be given back to the record office. Next is how is the exchange of mail done? How is the exchange of mail done? So the exchange of mail is done based on the important document called as due mail sorting list. What do you mean by due mail sorting list? That is a list that is issued by the superintendent which describes the number of bags that it needs to receive and at what time they need to be received, who will receive it, at what station it they will receive it. Everything will be there in that. That will be described in the due mail sorting list. If it is a mail office, these particulars are enough. What about section? Section will also show the number of station that the section has to stop. Like if it is in a, for example, if the section is a part of a moving train, what are all the number of station that the train, that section is going to cross, where it goes, where it is going to stop. Then the number of mail officers that is going to deal with it and what time it has to be receiving, what time it needs to dispatch. And all this will be entered in the, you'll be present in the due mail sorting list. Okay. What about exchange of mails? What will you do? If in a moving train, imagine in a moving train, section is there, no? 
what should they do first what is the rules what does the rule say can they give away the bags first or should they receive the bags first they should always receive the mails first and then dispatch the mails why because the train move you have to understand that the train moves the section moves means dispatch of mails can be done easily when compared to receipt of mails always a section the moving part has to receive the mails first and then dispatch the mails if it is a stationary office that is a mail office it is going to be in reverse because they have to give the bags first to the section then only section can receive the bags so when it comes to mail office they have to dispatch the bags first and then receive the bags suppose the section is already fully packed it is jam packed with a lot of bags the section is unable to receive any more bags then what can they do can they like put an error entry and just uh, dispatch the bags first and then receive the bags the rule does not give provision for you to do that you have to have the permission of gpmg to dispatch the mails first when it comes to section this is about exchange of mails those are all the important things and the other things that are like notes in this rule are a mail exchanger whoever it is whoever is exchanging they should not generally enter into the section what about the exchange of mails how will they do it can be done either through the door or the window it can be done in either way but what about mail office and a post office they are also not entered whoever is the carrier from the even the post office personnel should not enter into the mail office they should not enter into the rms office but in some cases pmg may permit the mail office to enter into the mail van or section now when can they enter when can the supervisor like hsc or mail agent can enter into the section when there is a cash to be present in and it is prescribed in the due list then the k for examining the cash to be the hsc or mail agent will be allowed to enter into the sections or mail offices sections cash to be will be in sections and when they get it it will be in the mail office what is cash to be we will see in the next rules now when we said the how it is going how it is important to receive the mails first and before dispatching when it comes to section now while doing this if it is receipt is being whoever is receiving the mails then where will where will they enter the receipt they'll be having a receipt book in other cases there will be mail payments book a yeah, mail payments book because book number is ms28 generally there is a receipt book if there is no receipt books in other cases mail payments book is used and the number is ms28 mail list will be in triplicate why one is the office copy the two you take it out and one you get the acknowledgement one and one you give it to the receiver and next is suppose usually hsc only is supposed to be, be in charge of the exchange of mails if he is already having too much of duty then the work will be distributed among other officials and this will be mentioned by the superintendent in the memorandum of distribution of work but it will be authorized by the head of the circle the chief pmg has to say that okay hsc need not be present for exchange of mails this person can be present so this will be mentioned in the mdw memorandum of distribution of work now in these cases from one section to other section or from one person to another official if it is handed over that will also be get acknowledged in the mail list next is the concept of cash tb we need to know what is cash tb first what is tb tb is transit bag transit bag means what again the content date is the forward bag the concept of forward bag like the contents of the transit bag will not be opened and dealt by the mail office like the tb inside the tb there will be a mail bag there will be an account bag there will be a registered bag there will be a registered bag addressed to the in to some other crc when you open a tb transit bag the inside it there will be several other bags okay however that tb will be addressed to whom the concerned mail office okay so in that case if it is tb means 
if it is small, if the TB is going to contain less number of bags, like if it can be closed in a physical sack, then it will be a small bag. If the number of bags that is concerning to the concern, if it is addressed to the mail office, suppose the mail office is going to receive like, if it is going to receive like 50 bags from different offices or something like that, the section need not open that and deal with the content of it. They just need to deliver those bags to the mail office. In that, in that situation, the train may stop at one mail office and it may proceed to another mail office or it may proceed to another station. So in that case, the bags that are addressed to the concerned mail office, they need to be gathered together in such a way that they do not get scattered or lost. In that case, those bags will be enclosed in the cage TB. It is nothing but whatever it's physical cage. Imagine a physical cage. So in that case, these bags will be there and it will be closed and the band and the cage will be locked and sealed and naturally if there is a lock there is going to be a key the person who is closing the cage tv to the other mail office he is going to be having the key so how to hand over the key to the in charge of the other mail office it will be the key will be enclosed in a cover and the cover will be sealed and it will be handed over to the Mail, uh, mail agent or mail agent, whoever is in charge of the section. So when the mail office, when the train or section stops at the mail office, the concerned HSA of that mail office supervisor is HSA, right? He will come into the section. He will see, he will see that the KHTB is not damaged. Like no, whatever KHTB is there, it, like some bags are not uh, retrieved from it. No obstruction is there like that. He is going to cross verify the no bag inside the cage to be is uh, damaged or like is lost so he's going to check that the uh, cage is impact that the lock is not tampered with so he's going to examine the seal and after that after seeing all the checking all this when when he, when can he do that only after receiving the key right so here the mail pen will be hand over, handing over the seal the cover containing the key to the hsa the hsa will break open the cover take the key out open the cage and check the seals and everything inside it. So this is called as cage TV. HSA will enter into the section only when he needs to examine the cage TV or otherwise even he is not allowed to enter inside a section. Now the question that will be asked in this rule is how will the key of a cage TV be forwarded? It will be forwarded in a sealed cover. This is one now. Uh, MCQ that is always asked in exams, seal the cover. Now we are going to talk about how we are going to dispose the mails. There are different kinds of bags that will be received now. So what, what, how each bag is going to be dealt. First is transit bag. I told that transit bag will contain several bags like register bag and uh, like uh, account bag, such kind of register TD bag, register NTD bag and uh, account bags so when it contains many bags when can you find how to how to know that the mail list will contain one tb what will be uh, what will be the detail in the mail list the external mail list that will be presented to the mail office will be that one tb but when the one tb is opened inside that there will be another list and that list needs to be opened and then that list needs to be taken out and that list will contain the number and the description of the bags that is enclosed in the TV. So as soon as opening the bag, you need to take the mail list inside the TV. Check that if it is mentioned that there is one registered TD, two, two registers non-TD, one spade bag, one account bag. Like all the contents of all those bags are present or not, they have to verify that. What about parcel? Same thing. If, if the mail office is very huge, there will be separate departments like mails, like there will be a registration department, there will be a parcel department. If it is very large, then there will be a separate insurance department as well. So if it, if the, if it contains, suppose when opening the bar TB, there is a parcel bag inside it, then you hand over to the parcel assistant, sorting assistant, and take the signature in the abstract. Whatever it is, if it is being transferred to another department, you have to get the acknowledgement.
any kind of bags you have to it has to be opened only by the hsa the in charge of the office suppose you're talking about forward bags these forward bags they will be placed in the transit bags not automatically if they are not prescribed how to if it is not prescribed what to do with those forward bags they will just hang in the hoop and as the station comes they will be giving till they will just forward those bags to the concerned uh, mail office or uh, POs, whatever they are prescribed if there are sacks addressed to record office imagine that the mail office is uh, in another place and record office is in another place we already saw that whatever bag requirement is there for uh, mm, the mail office it will be supplied through the record office and if there are excess bag in the mail office it will also be returned to the record office so if the sacks are addressed to the record office like there are balance bags balance sacks then those uh, those sacks will be placed separately in a bag there will be a separate bag for that in that bag it will be pressed it will be it will be kept and then it will be close to the record office so automatically so now imagine that you receive 10 bags among them two or forward bags you the other all the other things and sorting assistants will be busily dealing with the contents of the eight bags the two forward bags they're not going to open so what what will happen to those two bags till their dispatch time comes it should be in the personal custody of the in charge supervisor who is hsa okay if they're not able to dispatch then you have to keep keep it in the mailbox lock it and take it with you so whatever it is forward bags is the personal custody of hsa this is about how each bag is dealt now if you say mail list unusual mails should automatically be entered promptly is there any requirement to say separately as a separate rule you have to know the importance if it is a due mail you will compulsorily understand that these bags are going to be mandatorily received if instead of receiving three bags from that particular office you received five bags you should not think that i received only three bags and you should not deal only with those three bags it is very important that any additional bags any unusual meals that is being received should be entered immediately in the mail list imagine the section is receiving uh, an unusual mail so before the train goes to the next station immediately it has to be entered into the mail list if it is a mail office before they are placed for dispatch before they are taken out before they are going to be processed it has to be entered into the mail list that is what we are going to talk about in this rule it is very important that any unusual mails or extra mail extra bags should be entered promptly in the mail list well, who will prepare this mail list always know that mail list in charge is the supervisor hsa like 99 percentage of the time who is in charge who is in charge it will always be hsa and if there is imagine that the mail list is containing describing like 100 bags the 100 bags will not be entered in one sheet of paper the particulars may go for additional sheet additional sheet so the hsa should not sign the last page alone every page should be signed by the head sorting assistant and it should be date stamped okay that is the importance because there is a possibility of the like if there are three pages in the mail list he is signing only in the third page like based on their convenience if there is an untoward incident the first page and the second place may get replaced that is why it's important to sign each and every page next is closing of transit bags what do you mean by closing of transit bags so all the bags will be as i shall check them and their entries will be made in the mail list and then it will be how to close the transit bag before placing any bag into the transit bag transit bag contains many bags so before placing any bag inside the transit bag you have to check each and every con condition of the each and every bag and then place it inside the transit bag close it in the presence of the head sorting assistant or mail agent who would always bags will be opened bags will be closed everything will be done in the presence of hsa only or the mail agent or mail guard simply to say the supervisor 
this is what they're saying in transit bags. You just need to know the transit bag needs to be closed in the presence of supervisor. Okay, who will complete the mail agent? When will the who will mail abstract? Who will come? How when will this mail abstract be completed? Like full day, they'll be receiving mails and dispatching the mails. So when to do that? If it is section automatically before the arrival of terminal station, which is the last station, they will complete it. In case of mail office, each one will be having a set. Set means particular time under which a particular group of people will work. Like if it is from 8 to 4, they will work in that period only. If it is a night set, they will work in those night hours only. Particular hours through which a particular set of people work, officials work. That is called a set in a mail office. So for each set, there will be mail abstract. So who will do this? As usual, supervisor. Give it a section, mail agent, mail guard, mail office, HSA. So far, we have seen about uh, general rules that is applicable both for section and mail offices. That is what was present in completely in chapter 2. Now we are going to narrow down like separately for mail offices, what are all the rules. Next sections will come. Everything will come like separately. Before going deep into the chapter, know that as a general rule, every important thing like opening or closing, head sorting assistant will be the in charge for that. May, because we are talking about mail offices. If you learn mail offices clearly, you will understand sections clearly because everything is just the same. You just need to compare and simplify and read it. So automatically the first rule is about HLC. What all he has to do? Just now we learned in this uh, general regulation, receive the bags, close the bags, we keep the uh, forward bags in the safe for study. Apart from this, what are all the other things that is being prescribed? He is also responsible that unregistered articles that are dealt are properly dispatched or sorted. For unregistered ordinary mails, he is completely in charge. He has to see that there is no lapse in that, no lacuna in that. Apart from that, any kind of irregularity, he has to immediately report it to the record office. So since he's writing in the mail of start, he since he is in charge of it, he is automatically supposed to take care of everything. So I told that mm, he is in charge of the receipt. In case the CPMG wants to give this duty of receipt of mails to some other person, he can do that. The CPMG can do that. And it will be mentioned in the MDW even by the superintendent. So if there is a fault in the condition of bags, who received for everything, we will hold the HSA responsible. If there is an insured bag, what about insured bag? Even for ordinary mails, we are making HSA responsible. So we need not explain the importance of insured bag. Automatically, the weight, the dispatch, everything should be in the presence of HSA only. Simply to say, HSA will be held responsible if anything goes wrong. 48. Supervision of set. I told that set is in a mail office. It will be working around the clock. The same person will not be working around the clock. clock. In that time, uh, what will happen? Like they may prescribe a set, like a particular period of time through which a particular set of people will work. So that is called as a set. So, in this set, for each set, who will be supervising? Who will be the supervisor? Automatically, HSA will be the supervisor. Now, if there are separate departments like registration department, parcel department, if something is there like that, then the registration sorting assistant or parcel sorting assistant will be in charge of the department. If anything goes wrong, in registration department, registering sorting assistant will be held responsible first. Next, HSA will be responsible because he is the total supervisor. He is supposed to report anything unusual. If he fails to report, then he will be held responsible. Then what else is there in this? If there is a LG supervisor, he can like examine the efficiency of sorting assistant, how he is performing, how to 
examine the efficiency of sorting assistant, he has to know the sorting list. Sorting list means how many offices are there, how many offices they need to close the back. That sorting list he has to know thoroughly. Supervisor has the power to test the efficiency. What about the B order and TB order? What is B order and TB order? It will be dealt separately in a manual five and other things. If you say it in a, even in this, at last you will be knowing. Simply to say, sorting list, whatever it is, it will be a set, a standard yeah, form. Sorting list will be a standard form, due mail sorting list. So this sorting list, if there is any change to the sorting list, separate order will be issued. That is called as A order. Any other order that needs to be communicated to the sorting assistant, that will be in the B order. TB order is for CAM bags. Whether it is A order, B order, or TB order, whatever order it is, the officer competent to do these things are superintendent, SRM. Superintendent of RMS, he is only competent to issue A order, B order, or TB order, whatever it is. So once these orders are issued, it is the duty of HSA to explain it. Whenever newly, if there somebody is recruited as sorting assistant, he has to explain what is V order, TB order and all. Next rule is ordinary mails, how it is being sorted. Like I already explained, head sorting assistant, allergy supervisor, he has to assist in the sorting of ordinary mails. And apart from that, attendance of uh, 50th rule is attendance of set. Automatically, you have to be on time always. They can also ask them to attend half an hour early. They have to be present in time and neatly dressed. The next three rules, 51, 52, and 53 are deleted. Mailbags, opening of mailbags. In this is also nothing special. It is just showing, saying, repeating the same thing. HSA is known to open the mailbags. And when opening the mailbags, he has to turn the bag inside out so that nothing remains outside inside this. Okay. As usual, whenever relaxation is needed in the entire volume seven, if there is any relaxation needed, PMG may give that, make the exception. What about the rule number 55? What about the register bags? Automatically registered bag, whatever it is being received, it will be handed over to the registration department. HSA will receive it and he will hand over to the registration sorting assistant department. He is a registration SA is in charge you now for the registration abstract for the registration department. So it will be handed over to him. And where will you get the acquittance? Automatically in the registration abstract. If there is no bag received on that day, then automatically you have to write a nil. Why? Because later on, when you see the abstract, you should not get confused whether you got the bag or not. So you have to write nil report. So after getting, uh, if the if the registration sorting assistant is present separately, after getting the acquittance, he has to again hand it over, hand over the same to the sorting assistant, and again for that also you have to give the acquittance. If in the mail list, if in the mail list, if the acquittance is not, if there is no prescribed mail list for a handing over to the so, uh, HSA, then you have to get the sign in the abstract. Now we saw about registered bags. Next is parcel. Parcel is the same thing, nothing different. Parcel department, if it is separate, they have to take charge of it. And uh, the extra thing in this is, if it is an insured bag, you have to examine the weight that it is correct. This weighing things and all will be done in the presence of head sorting assistant. But who will do that? It will be done by the parcel assistant. Opening of other bags. We saw about registered bag, ordinary bag, parcel bags. Now, what if there are any other bags? What do you mean by any other bag? Like BO bags are there. BOs, no, sometimes the BOs may close the bags too. If the uh, sub office is in some other place, account office is in some other place, the way um, I mean, BO bags may have to be con conveyed through the mail office. So, if the BO bag is closed to the mail office, they will open it. They will see, like, if it is an account bag, they will send the account back to the concerned account office. If there is a registration bag or something, it they will deal with it. So other rules are very small rules. We'll just have, have uh, just uh, like just 
you just need to know what they what each rule says rule 58 is regarding receipt of articles and bags for dispatch so whenever uh, ordinary mails are received for whenever it is being handed over to the other the other department if it is handed over by by one one sorting assistant to other sorting assistant it will be done under acquittance 59 is certificate of posting which is discontinued now now we don't have that 60 is also deleted 61 61 what do they say it is same thing is being repeated here unusual we already talked that we already discussed ordinary articles head sorting assistant will be in charge of that so when they are preparing bundles when bundles are prepared he has to ensure the correctness of it also like if there is a separate mails uh, sorting assistant the mails list will be prepared and it will be like every every the correctness of the mailbags will be ensured by the concerned sorting assistant 63 is also a very simple role parcel and parcel bags for dispatch whenever it's being received it has to be closed if it is if it is sent loose we have to mention it in the mail list that this is being sent close if it is not being sent close and if it is being sent inside a tb along with the other mail bags and then we have to talk about that also in the mail list in the tb list it will be, there will be a mail list inside the tb in that they will mention that one parcel is closed inside of that simply to say these rules are very simple head sorting assistant is the overall in charge whenever articles are being handed over from one department to the department where they have to receive the acknowledgement that you need to read and memorize it whether it's in the mail list or abstract we are going to talk about work papers what do you mean by work papers work paper means record office will give the work papers to the concerned mail office what will that work paper contain like what are all the things that they need to do everything will be there in the work papers so whenever work papers are handed over to the mail office who is in charge of mail office hsa he will get the mail work papers from the record office then he will give to concerned branches if it is registration or parcel he will hand over to that and he will also see that he when he gets back those work papers contents are done or whatever is being assigned or whatever whatever the columns are there everything is filled up and after examining everything if he's examining everything he will receive it from the sorting assistant and after verifying everything he has to give a sign in the abstract that he has received the work papers head sorting assistant will receive the work paper from the record office he will distribute it to the registration and parcel department and after the work papers are filled by the registration department and parcel department after the work is completed during after the closing hours that like at the closing hours they will return back the work papers to the hsc what will the hsa do after receiving the work papers he can't simply get and keep and say okay you can leave i will check later he can't say that before the concern sorting assistant whether he is registration assistant or parcel sorting assistant before leaving before he leaves the premises you have to cross check that everything is correct if you have any doubts you need to clarify it in the presence of sorting assistant and then give acknowledgement in the abstract 65 custody of stamp seals and keys if you're not using simple logical rules if you're not using any stamp and seal keep it in the lock he have to lock them up and keep it separately so before closing the office he has to whatever stamps and seals he is having separately he could have given day stamp for other things insurance seals and all will be there so everything he has to have it in his custody during closing hours if it is an insured seal automatically it will never leave his custody insured seal will always be in the custody of head sorting assistant Suppose we saw that head sorting assistant is in charge for insured articles. If there is a separate provision in which LSG supervisor has to take care of the duties, in that case, LSG supervisor can have the custody of insurance seal. See, these are all duties of head sorting assistants only. 
he is only responsible for keys of the office suppose during the working hours the sorting assistant may have the keys for the particular department or like that but once the set is done like completion of the working hours he has to get all the keys and get it back to his custody uh, so automatically all the books also will be in his custody only that's all in this remember that stamps and seals when they are not in use you have to lock and keep them and uh, insurance seal will always be in the custody of head sorting assistant if there are separate uh, departments separate seals will be there they will be using it throughout the day throughout the working hours by the end of the working hours it has to be returned to the hsc we are talking about the uh, last rule in the chapter 3 final duties before quitting office so far we talked what all hsc has to do even before leaving he has so much of responsibility what he has to do he has to go around the office he has to see that no article is left unsorted like the, if there is a rack like if we have the sorting case in the sorting case somebody could have kept one bundle of uh, ordinary mail separately without sorting it should not be done it he, he is responsible he has to see that it is sorted then the what about the stationery the like they will be using seals the threads everything needs to be bags everything they have to place it inside the not the bags stationeries and say seals and a book on the format of start everything they have to place in the portfolio we talked about portfolio right portfolio is like a steel uh, or any imagine a big container inside this everything will be there that's a portfolio so if there are bags that needs to be returned to the record office you have to seal and label it so after seeing checking that no article is uh, remaining unsorted he has to see that the office is swept clean. Why, why, why is it mentioned in the rule to sweep the office and the, because while sweeping, you may get some unsorted letter that could have flown away. It would have been lying somewhere. You'll be able to retrieve that. That is why we need, it is, it is mandatory to check that the office is swept and everything should be kept clean and tidy manner. And you should see that nothing is broken or any seals are there, everything he has to keep it under a lock and key and in his personal study in the portfolio and when uh, when he is going on leave or if he is going to be succeeded by set another set he has to hand over that to the next set by entry in the mail list so what will be handed over not the portfolio portfolio is separate for each set we are talking about the deposit mails some mails are not being, uh, if they have to forward the bags and it is the concerned that section or the train availability is not present to forward the bags, then they can be handed over to the next set so that they can do that. So all these things will be entered in the mail list. So far we saw what happens in the sorting mail office. We still have several rules remaining. We will go see in the next session. So that's all for today. Thank you.